Hi everybody, and Merry Christmas. My name is Peter Laws, and this is the Flicks the Church for God, where I explore the deeper and sometimes spiritual themes of horror films. Now, if you want to, you can follow me on Twitter at Rev Peter Laws or at Facebook at the Flicks the Church for God. Also, however, you may not be aware, some of you don't know this, but this YouTube show is actually also an audio podcast and has been an audio podcast for many years. So why don't you visit the new home for the Flicks the Church Forgot audio, which you'll find at SoundCloud. Just visit soundcloud.com or go through your iTunes subscription and you'll get the Flicks the Church Forgot entire back catalogue of audio episodes. And believe me, that includes some fantastic horror movies that I've reviewed through the through the years. Um, also, you'll get audio versions of the YouTube videos if you prefer to listen to this stuff on the go. And there's even a few musical treats in there too. So do check out SoundCloud and follow over there. But tonight, with Christmas coming around the corner, I thought I would help you with your Christmas shopping. Uh, do you have a horror fan in your life? A loved one that likes these sorts of things? Or perhaps, let's face it, maybe you are that horror fan and you want to spend your Christmas money. Well, um, there's nothing I like better than on a Christmas morning waking up and opening presents and then I discover that I've got a book. And if it's a horror movie book, all the better. Tonight, join me for some recommendations of some great horror movie book, stocking fillers, and some mighty coffee table tomes all about scary movies. First up, I want to talk to you about English Gothic by Jonathan Rigby. This hefty hardback is a brilliantly um, detailed overview of over a hundred years of British terror. And it's packed with trivia, detail, and it all comes through Rigby's typically classy, insightful vibe. To call this book exhaustive might suggest that it's kind of like wading through cement, uh, but it really is the opposite of that. This is like a delightful read. It's filled with um, photographs. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with Jonathan Rigby, then you may well have seen him if you watch any uh, Blu-rays and DVD extras because he often crops up on some of those. He's kind of like an expert on English horror movies, but actually, to be honest, he's an expert on most movies from around the world, but particularly English ones. And you'll find him often cropping up discussing old Hammer movies and the special features of uh, films. But he's got this brilliant flair for language, but also a giddy love of the horror genre, which makes English Gothic less of a dense historical primer and more a kind of delightful skip through the macabre history of British cinema. All the expected titles you would think would be here are here, um, the, the sort of the horror classics, but I suppose where the book really shines is unearthing all the sort of the lost forgotten films or the oddities that you might not have known about. And I certainly found that after reading this book, uh, um, I'm actually not finished it yet, I'm halfway through it, uh, but so far I am my, my, my wish list or my, my watch list is getting bigger and bigger because of it. And the inclusion of snippets of reviews from the time of contemporary reviews when the films came out, the occlusion of those is a masterstroke. I just love hearing what contemporary critics and audiences thought of movies when they first came out. They were seeing these films cold. They didn't have the light of distance and history and nostalgia to morph them into something cool. Um, and so I always love to find out what audiences at the time thought. And it's cool seeing some modern classics being slated at the time as being dreck. English Gothic is, uh, I would say, required reading for anyone who's interested in uh, British horror cinema, and I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Now, whereas Rigby delights in the written word, and that really comes through, Thomas Hodge's VHS video cover art is a glossy celebration of imagery, or more specifically, imagery of the retro video sleeve. Look at that beast, it's beautiful. Now, Hodges is a very talented artist himself. You'll see his work on some killer retro movie posters like um, the Hobo with a Shotgun and The Innkeepers. He's got a very distinctive style. And he uses this book uh, to curate over 240 examples of vintage VHS and Betamax cover art. He does this also with a kind of an evangelical fervor. There's not a lot of writing in the book, but that's not a problem uh, because this book pretty much gives almost every inch of the space to the covers themselves. And after all, that is what the book is, is, is about. In our current world of lazy Photoshop movie art, I feel like this book doesn't just push the nostalgia button. It's actually, I would say, an important celebration of a forgotten art. Movie covers and posters 
I don't think ever looked so fun, wacky, elaborate or intricate as they did in the 1980s sort of video scene. And flicking through these covers in this coffee table book brought back and brings back that dusty plastic thrill of flicking through the shelves of my local video store. Um, I recognized so many of these films uh, when I was flicking through that they were etched somewhere in my subconscious from my youth. But it isn't just horror that's in here. It's uh, comedy and crime and science fiction, but the horror section is particularly of note. Um, it makes for a great book to whip out at dinner parties when, you know, when you get like-minded folks drop by. Uh, just be aware there's a little bit of nudity in it. VHS cover art is a lovely book, and it is published by Schiffer. Another hefty Nice looking hardback book uh, comes from this wedding photographer called Tony Urban, and it's called Travelogue of Horror. And in here, his uh, day job takes a backseat to his obsession with the dark side of culture. So he, along with his mother, uh, treks across America, snapping shots of famous ho uh, horror movie locations. But also there's true life crime sites and places of fortune interest too. It's a really jolly jaunt from where the toddler got hit by a truck in Pet Cemetery to Jeffrey Dahmer's childhood cabin. It's a bit grim. Um, it's a pretty inspired premise. Sadly, I would say, though, it does get a little bit lost in the design. The photographs in this book really are genuinely gorgeous, and you just want to like, look at them and examine them. But they're just way too small, uh, often, in the book. And so a lot of space is used up for large titles and text. Um, it kind of does the opposite of what VHS video cover art does, which is just fill the page with image. Um, it left me itching, I guess, to see bigger shots of these photographs because they're so well tucked. Also, to see more of the photographs that I would have liked. Uh, for example, it's a frustrating tease when you hear Urban describe, for example, um, experiencing sensory overload while he's taking various shots of Camp Crystal Lake from the Friday the 13th movies, only to find that actually hardly any of those pictures are included in the book because there's no space for them because there's so much writing. Now, having said that, though, it's still a cool book and it's worth checking out. And, and, and the stuff that's written in here is fun to read, too. And Urban feels like a, a horror kindred spirit, but occasionally you may need a magnifying glass to appreciate the sights he saw. I hope that one day there may be a second edition of this that gives more space to these brilliant photographs because they really do deserve um, to be seen because he's an excellent photographer with a good eye for the spooky. Travelogues of Horror is out um, from Schiffer. Now, if you're looking for a book that is um, a bit easier to carry than the last three, then let me recommend this nifty little title. And it's a full color paperback by Jim O'Rea and it's called... Hollywood Paranormal Films, Fact or Fiction. If you buy this and you look through it, you may immediately think that the graphic design feels a little bit homespun, which it kind of does, um, but the content is actually really fascinating. It, it looks at the supposed true cases behind well-known horror movies. I thought it was well-written and I enjoyed it, and so some, some quite informative parts too. He's quite skeptical about famous hauntings like Amityville or the supposed haunting in Connecticut, but um, he rattles off uh, the details with a really infectious enthusiasm for the subject, and I found this a quick um, and informative read. Also, he covers some of the less famous horror films as well, like my, one of my favorites, The Changeling from 1980 or The Entity from 1982. So Hollywood Paranormal is out also from Schiffer, and I'd say it's really worth, worth, worth a read. I, I enjoyed it. Now, getting back to heavy stuff, you're going to need to flex your muscles again for this massive horror hardback. This time, it's Nightmare USA, the untold story of the exploitation independence. Look at that. It's from Stephen Thrower. And um, this one may, may have been out for quite a while now. But this massive, lavishly illustrated book is a down and dirty delight. Thrower. He's a really great guy. He's, a, he's a, got a superb knack of weeding out the grottier and really sleazier side of cinema. And yet he couples this with a really kind of sensitive appreciation for the art and poetry and the power of so-called low-grade art. Like um, Jonathan Rigby, who I mentioned earlier, throwers uh, in this book. He just throws out some movie recommendations that you might never have heard of. And so, therefore, it will keep you stocked with goggle fodder for months, maybe even years. 
Um, now, this might not be the sort of book that you can happily read in Starbucks because um, it's not exactly like safe for work. There are some pretty horrific images scattered among these pages and nudity and things too. Um, but if you don't care about disturbing your fellow coffee drinkers or you can find yourself in a cozy corner at least, then I would say it's a really deep journey into an exciting era of American cinema. That's uh, Nightmare USA and that's from Fab Press. Now I've got one more large coffee table book for this part and this is uh, the book Monsters in the Movies from John Landis. Getting a bit of a workout here, lifting these up and down. Um, don't be expected to get the same kind of depth and analysis uh, as the last book in this. Um, you know, you get loads of minute, fascinating details in the thrower book, but this really is more of an excuse to show glossy pictures of monsters down through the ages. And that there are some interesting interviews in here, however. There's uh, like Landis chats to folk like Christopher Lee and, and Joe Dante. So that's all really interesting stuff. But I wouldn't exactly say it's the most enlightening book in the world. But it is a great opportunity to study the image of many of um, cinema's most iconic monsters. It's uh, the monsters in the movies from Dolan Kindley. Kindersey? How do you pronounce that? DK? Dolan Kindley. Let me check this out. Hang on. I should know this. It's probably the most famous. Um... Darling Kindersley. Thank you. That took a while. Darling Kindersley. That's out. Uh, and um, yeah, worth checking out. Well, listen, that's it for the first part of this episode. Um, I feel like that's like that's enough for you to be going on for, with now. But join me in the next one, which is coming up very soon, um, where I'll be suggesting a bunch more horror movie books, including looking at Bigfoot, uh, Salem's Lot, and a fascinating book called Satanic Panic, which explores pop culture paranoia in the 1980s. It's worth checking that one out. But until then, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Rev Peter Laws. Come and join me at SoundCloud for the audio podcast or Facebook for interaction. And do share and subscribe the videos if you're up for that and do subscribe to the youtube channel and also don't forget the flicks the church forgot